Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Joe's Arctic, and today we're going to cover the portal gun, go over applied energistics, wireless stuff, and also how to facade. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, today I've ran the Parabox one time, and I went ahead and duplicated my drive, because I had some stuff in there that I really wanted to get. Now, um, some things have changed in these mod packs. It's a little difficult for me to fully... Um, explain and kind of go I can't go back into videos and tell you guys um, some things that have changed into updates but there are going to be some changes that are going to be coming um, to this pack and if you've gotten this far into this let's play um, hopefully you got into this episode and you see that some things have changed um, I did use this I did use flight uh, chorus fruit flight so if we take a look at glowing chorus fruit Glowing Chorus Fruit can no longer has a crafting recipe. You need Shulker Pearls in order to get Glowing Chorus Fruit. So if you want to have this kind of flight, which I did use early on, unfortunately that was removed. Um, there are other ways, like we showed how to get glitched armor. Um, you can get Glowing Chorus Fruit. You can go to the end. We haven't yet, but you'll believe me, it is it's very simple to go to the end. Um, the end is, there's a surprise there once you get there. Um, that will definitely help you out and you'll understand how easy it is to actually get flight once you go there. But I've done a lot of stuff. I just kind of wanted to go over that. There's probably gonna be some changes, slight changes that I want to talk about. One of the changes indefinitely is going to be the fact that there is no wireless crafting grid. There is a wireless grid, but there's no wireless crafting grid right now. And the reason is, is because there is a mod update that is being waited or it's just being waited on. Um, there's a mod that is just waiting for an update. Once that mod gets updated, then you will probably have access to a crafting grid. That'll be part of extra cells. Right now it's disabled because it was causing crashing and the mod pack developer as of right now hasn't responded since February 9th from what it looks like in the crash or in the, uh, the issue tracker. Um, so it may be at this point, if you're watching this later on that, you know, you have it. I just wanted to explain that to those who are wondering why it's not in the pack um, and why I'm not going to be using one uh, in the future. Because as of right now, it's just not out. Um, also, I wanted to, everybody was like saying, I, I kind of messed up here. I spelt input wrong. Well, I, I changed it, I guess. Or insert. I did insert, didn't I? And, and normally I don't even do insert. It's so weird that I... I used insert. I actually accidentally broke these when I was taking a screenshot, so I had to rename them and reset up the whole thing. Um, and I just did in. <laughs> but normally I do input. And I don't do insert. I don't know why I typed insert. But I yeah, insert. It was just me being tired. I, I don't know why. Um, maybe just my brain wasn't working right. But this is not an insert chest. It's an input chest. You input items in not insert items. This pipe does the insertion, right? This is the insertion. This is extracting. So this is an extract, extraction chest uh, or an input chest because this is actually inputting items into the network. Um, anyways, weird. I, I, I don't know. I don't have to break it down, but I, I <laughs> just some stuff that I ended up doing um, because I did see there was a lot of concerning comments about me uh, misspelling a word. I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, it doesn't matter if you misspelled a word, just whatever. But I, I just, it's funny to talk about. Anyways, <laughs> let's jump into what today's episode is fully going to be about. And that is going to be about getting Applied Energistics fully set up with auto crafting and also connecting these guys up. Yeah, I did it. I went through the process of moving all of these folders and organizing them like a real office worker would do. <sighs> Man, that was a task, by the way, um, because these were all in a jumbled mess in uh, down below. Um, it was on this black platform. It was just all a jumbled mess. They were all in disarray, disorder. Well, I've kind of fixed that now, and we have this really nice setup here, and we even have room for some other stuff to maybe put on the sides, but this is going to be our mass storage, and I have this open because I'm waiting for a specific drop from this, um, which we may be able to get when we go to the end, but... Um, for right now, that's just what I'm working on. And then I also want to get the wireless crafting uh, set up. 
So that shouldn't be too hard either. So let's take a look at this. Applied energistics. The main focus I want to have is to get import buses made for this thing, get our ME cables made and route this bad boy. Um, and then also facade this thing. So we're gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna need some import buses. I know I'm going to need a lot of Fluix crystals. Um, so if we go to uh, integrated dynamics, you can see right here, we don't have a lot of stuff. Um, I am going to go ahead and pull that out of this cabinet. If I, if I had my other tool, my magnifying glass, that'd be a lot easier, but I'm going to need a few of these. So I might as well take them out now. And we'll just put our folders back in. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to need my mineral chunks. Uh, those are going to be definitely needed and some redstone. And let's see, some kind of pipe. How about we do integrated dynamics pipes? Can I have, do I have the stuff? We can even cover integrated dynamics in here. How cool is that? Um, so, yeah, we should be able to do that. Um, don't I have, I just pulled the crystals. Wait, what just happened? What just, I know, wait. No way did I just accidentally void. Those mineral chunks. No, I didn't. Weird. What did? What in the world? It's like deja vu. Didn't we just do this? It it automatically puts it back in. Huh? Is it like a storage drawer where you right click on the the item on the folder and it automatically goes in? I don't remember that being a thing. Let's try this. And last but not least, that. I'm gonna leave it open because I think putting it in there messes things up. Anyways, we're gonna get into item transport, or item transport with integrated dynamics. It's, a, and, and uh, the tunnels. It's actually really easy to do. This is a really, really useful piping setup. And uh, it's gonna become very, very useful later on. So we have our um, item interfaces, we have an importer, and we have an exporter. So you can think of these, it kind of tells you there, imports item to the network, exports items from the network. Our network is whatever our interface is connected to. So that's a great way to think about this, right? So let's go ahead and get that hooked up. We can, I love talking about new mods. We need to make these variable or input variable transformers. I think I might have, have some. Oh, we also need to make variable cards. Um, variable cards are very useful. We're gonna have to have those on us as well. So yeah, we need to make these input variables transformers and uh, you use them in combination with your, your item interfaces and you have output variables. So output variables, one's a sticky piston and one's a piston. These are very simple to craft by the way. You can make these really early on in game as well. So what we're gonna need is to uh, basically use these to automate some of our machinery downstairs. Um, I'm going to have both importers and exporters, I believe, so I can show you how both work. So let's go ahead and make that importer and an exporter. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and use, um, chess will work just fine. So let's go ahead and take those down here. I think I have, I'm missing my other block, ain't I? Missing mineral. Or crystallized mineral, M E N. I don't know why I always spell that wrong. But this will be a good example of a great use of a pipe. So over here we have an alloy furnace. Um, what I want to do is put a chest here, and this will be an output chest. Input chest, output chest. Uh, we'll hook our interface into the chest because this is the inventory, correct? I want to pull items from the chest and I want, to go them, or I want them to go in here. We also need to make another cable, almost front. We can't do anything without logic cables. Logic cables are the pipes from integrated dynamics, and we also need the variable cards. 
and we'll talk about how easy these piping systems are to set up. So think of this, this is the inventory. And remember these say exports from the network. This is the network, right? Whatever this is, interface is connected to is the network. We're gonna run a cable, right? And we need to follow what these say. Exports items from the network. If I put this on here, it is going to export items from the network, meaning it's going to pull items from this chest and it's gonna insert it into here. So if we put this here, then that's exactly what it's going to do. So if we put redstone in this chest and crystallize, it should do that once we put the variable card in. So I'm gonna put export all items inside the first slot, set that to true. That's gonna pull the items out, they're gonna go into the slot. Perfect, right? And the next step we need to do is break this because we gotta go down. And I'm actually going to put a uh, an interface on here on this chest. Even though I could put an item interface on this chest or on this uh, inventory and then use another exporter, I'm just gonna show you the other example. And that is that I'm going to use an importer to import items, basically the opposite of that, but I'm gonna import items into the chest. And I can import items directly from here using the cable, right? And then we need to put a variable card in this slot and that sets it to true. Um, you can literally change this variable card if you want to, to do other tasks. You can change the item transfer rate. Uh, so you can adjust things from here. And then if you go here, you can change the tick operation. So you have a tick operation in this thing as well. Um, you can also change the target size or side by typing stuff in here and saving. Um, but this thing is super useful and it works. It, that's the thing, that's the beauty of it. It works and it works super fast. It's a very nice cable, very simple, and gets the job done. And it looks really good. I like the way these cables look. So all we gotta do is give this thing some power. Um, energy is the thing we are missing from that. Man, we're gonna learn a lot today. All right, let's get energy cables. I thought I had some energy, here. there we go. Thought I had some on me, but I guess not. All right, yeah, we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn a lot. I'm gonna try and f cram as much knowledge that I have into this episode as I can. There we go. And we also have the manufacturing, which I'm going to, uh, I'll eventually do the same thing for. I'm not gonna do it on camera since we already did this. But you can see as soon as the item goes in, it gets pulled out and goes into this chest. And that's how to set up integrated dynamics. <laughs> Very simple, right? Um, and that's basic item transfer with integrated dynamics. The same process works for fluids. It also works for energy as well. Um, so very useful. And you can use this with some other crazy things as well. Um, integrated dynamics can get as simple as this and as complicated as some uh, some Java scripting, Java coding, actually. I'd say more it's like Java, the Java related coding. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. And let's move on to the next part, uh, right? We are, we are gonna be um, creating some more, more goodness here. Let's go ahead and move this stuff out. Actually, I need the redstone and the mineral because we're making a lot of that. We're gonna go ahead and get that in there. All right. So yeah, this stuff is gonna be a big part of this. We need a lot of these, these crystals. And that's because this needs to go into, not a smelting, but um, this one, crushing factory. Um, and these all need to set to auto sort. And what I'm doing here is I actually have this set up so that way if an item can be smelted or duplicated, we can put it inside here, eliminating us, eliminating the need for the smeltery system to produce our ores. If I put items inside this cabinet to get enriched or in crushed, it will crush it down, but this one will duplicate ores. So I'll get the dust in twos and then it'll automatically send it over here. To do that, I have this set to auto eject I have the top set to input and the side here set to output and then this set to input, sorry, this set to input and the top set to output. So that way it kind of does this kind of thing. And that's how you can automate that pretty easy and they'll just put into the uh, cabinets above, which is really nice. These are single chests. So that is something you can also do. I can also put an output down here for those items that maybe can't be done. So I could put a cabinet down here as well. I guess I should probably do that for both, for items that can't be smelted. 
to have it done that way. Um, very, very nice to uh, to be able to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, all produced up. We need this Fluix dust because for pretty much everything that we do, including this and all kinds of other stuff, like, uh, like cores, which we're gonna need tons of, we're gonna need a lot of this stuff. Speaking of cores, that's what we're fixing to work on. So I know this is a little offhand, but I do have a, uh, a prestige point to spend. And I was thinking to make things a little easier for myself to, tr to move back and forth between locations, it might be a good idea to invest into the portal gun. Now the other options I have, because a lot of these things have actually changed in price. Um, so like this, this used to be 10 points, prestige points, now it's 25. This used to be 10 points, now it's 50. This used to be six points, now it's three. Um, these things have changed since I started the pack. Um, and, you know, some things are a little bit easier to get. I think um, this was not one point. I think this was two points or whatever. But I'm going to go for the portal gun. I think the portal gun is a great option, at least early game. And we can look up the portal gun right here. And we see this requires a miniature black hole. Now we need to make ender dust anyways later on. So if we take a look, we can smelt this like a normal ender pearl and it gives us this ender pearl dust. So let's get ender pearls. We have a ton of them. Come down here and we'll go ahead and smelt this down. This should smelt in here. There we go. And that's going to give us some ender pearls or ender, ender dust. From the portal gun mod. Now, nether stars also change. The method that I showed previously in the pack will no longer apply. Um, putting things in the auto crafter, like the saplings, to get that was actually removed. Um, apparently, that wasn't intended. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> but it wasn't. But that has changed. So, nether stars are not that hard to actually get, anyways. Um, we already have a easy way of getting nether stars. So this is, um, I don't see a nether star listed in the thing. But nether stars can be made this way with the extraterrestrial matter and some soul sand and some wither skeleton skull heads. I already have a max tier pristine wither skeleton skull or uh, wither skeleton model, which gives us pristine, which gives us a lot of heads. So getting nether stars is super simple. Extraterrestrial matter just requires in stone. Also very easy to make. And like I said, is a good way to get nether stars without fighting the boss. Back to portal guns. <laughs> I'm trying to explain everything. I, oh man, it's just what I do. So here we go, miniature black hole, and this guy, super easy to craft. And ours just happened to be pink, right? Um, I think we might be able to change the color. I don't know if the color is actually changeable. It, it's based on ID or something like that. Um, let's go into, uh, mod options, or one way we can get it to is, is go to options and controls, and down here you see iChun's keybinds, you click that, and go to portal gun, and right here you can see portal gun settings. You see there's a bunch of settings here. You have uh, keybinds for it. A uh, keybind that I really like to change is this to R. I like that to be the reset button. Everything else seems to be fine. Client settings, there's a few things you can do. You can create a bunch of lag for yourself by turning on see-through portals. Um, I'll show you what that looks like right now. So we can go ahead and set a portal. It's so weird that it's not the default color. And let's see, we work a lot here, right? So it'd probably be best to put a portal here. This is what these portals look like. And when you walk through, they're just like that, right? Um, so if I put a green portal over here, will that feel a little bit better? Yeah, that feels a little bit better. Yeah. So with these portals set up like that, you can see they're kind of bland. If you want to, if you have a great computer, right, and you can handle it, you can go into your controls, settings here, portal gun, go into your, uh, I believe it is the uh, client side options, and you can change the portal gun indicator size. You can change the, whether the sound's off, but you can turn on see-through portals and you can turn on fancy portals. What this does is it takes your frame rate and really, I mean, kind of crushes your frame rate to do this. But it actually gives you portals that you can really see through. Like I can see my applied energistic system. 
And look how detailed the ring of this thing is when you have fancy turned on. So if you can handle fancy, I mean, that's something that, to look at. These are pretty, pretty cool. And when you go through, it's exactly what you see. I mean, I find this really, really cool. Um, but that's just an option if that's your thing. Um, I will prefer to probably leave the fancy portals on. If it starts to cause more frame issues, then I will turn it off. But the see-through portals, I have to turn off just because it's just too much. But the fancy portals, I like them. I think they look pretty good, to be honest. Anyways, that makes my life a lot easier. Less jumping and flying around, <laughs> right? All right, so back to what we were really working on. That's import buses. Or not import buses. We need um, storage buses. So to make storage buses, we are going to need a lot of these formation cores. A lot. And I'm saying like 30 some odd a piece. Um, Annihilation core is the other one. And what we need is to make a lot of these ME interfaces. I, th I don't know the exact number we have. I should probably actually count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So we have eight of them. We need 32? Yeah. So we need 32 total of these. Perfect. That should be the exact number. And we're also going to need a bunch of sticky pistons and pistons. So we'll do sticky pistons as well. That needs to be halved, so 32. Wish there was an easy way to just do that, but I guess that's what the autocraft is for. And there's 32 of these bad boys. We're also going to need some cable. ME cable to be exact. And that should help us route all of these bad boys. All right, so under here, we're going to have to create access to these guys. And I don't, I remember having the birthday picks. I, I guess I never made it. It is called, is it from Tiny Progressions? It is. Okay. Party pickaxe, that's what it's called. So I shouldn't need that. I should just be able to repair it with this material, right? Oh no, you can't repair it. Wow, okay. That might be because it has that repair modifier thing on it. We're also gonna need some food. Eventually we're gonna get to the point where we won't need food, we'll just use power, um, which will be super cool. We'll turn ourselves into an android eventually. Spoilers to those who, <laughs> that may have spoiled. Is it this one as well? It is that one. What the one after it? Oh, it does. It goes way down there, doesn't it? Okay. And that one. There we go. Okay, so we got to do this to both sides. And we're going to hook this all up. And I'm going to explain to you Probably the easiest way to do this if you are managing to work with um, a lot of applied energistic stuff. I'm gonna really help you guys out. So with these ME storage buses, let's go ahead and place them here. I think I can get down just far enough. We can place these all along this. There we go. And on the other side as well. Technically, that's going there. I, I'll leave it for now because it's, it's going to stay, but that's not going to be a chest eventually. It's going to turn into a file cabinet. All right, so once those are all hooked up, we really need to make a special device. So, Applied Energistics has a thing called a memory card. And a memory card is a lovely device that lets you copy and paste configurations. So say we go to this bottom one here and we configure this. I want to set this to a high priority. 
So I'm going to just set it to 10 by default. And that means that anything that I put into the system will go into here first. So the higher the priority is first. So this is set, right? I've set that to 10. So instead of going to this one and just going uh, 10 and this one and going, man, 10, what I can do is, is shift click to copy the configuration and just paste it. So you can see right here, we just pasted it. If you look in here, it's already, already set to 10. So we can just do this for all of them. This makes the process so much quicker. Just don't forget, forget one. Otherwise you'll end up with a weird system. But yeah, this thing, this card is so handy when you have a lot of buses and things to hook up. Just makes your life way easier. And that's what modded Minecraft's all about, right? Making those monotonous tasks easier. And also making the game last longer. Or at least it used to be last longer. And also more fun. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hook all of these up. Some of these are going to get facaded. Some of them don't need to be. But for the most part, I'm going to facade most of these things. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get these all hooked up. And then I'm going to show you how to set the facades up. So now that I have the cable set up, it's time to talk about um, facading this and making it not look so ugly. So what I've done is I've connected these all along this side. And because there are no channels in this pack, I don't have to worry about channels. So really this works, if you've played with refined storage, works very similar to that. Um, or how AE1 used to work, where there was no channels. Very useful. Um, so what I can go ahead and do is go ahead and place this. I've, I just kind of wanted to show you how I routed my cables. Um, we're going to go ahead and make some facades. Now the materials that I'm going to need facades for seem to be cobblestone for the most part. Um, I think it's just this cobblestone stuff is like all that I need facades for. And we're going to have to facade the front and back side. And I think that's about it. And I don't think I want to cover the underside here under this part. I think that's going to look just fine. Um, I, uh, yeah, because there's really not much I want to do with that. So let's get to get to started with this and make some facades. Um, so I don't think facade is something that's just like showed shown blatantly in here. Is it with applied energistics just by itself? Um, I don't I don't really see it. So it probably it might be hard to find, but all you need is some cable anchors. So we need to make this and we can actually use tin, I think. For the cable anchors, we have tons of tin. So let's take this and we'll just make tons of tin, make tons of cable anchors because I know we're going to need a lot of them. And let's just go ahead and do this. We're going to make I don't know, a few stacks of this. As many as we can make out of this, uh, this cobblestone, this weathered cobblestone. So what we need to do is place this on the sides of the blocks that are going, that are, you're going to want hidden like so. And this is going to hide them and disguise them as if they were never there. And you can use any block. That's the magic of this is you can literally use any block to do this. And so this is what I'm going to, I'm going to continue to do. I've got to do this for the whole area. And look at that. You would never even know there was cables hidden under there. You just wouldn't. It is so disguised, which is why I absolutely love this. Um, and I'm going to have to do the outside as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. And then we're going to talk about something else. So now that we got all that done with the planet logistics, I think it's going to be great for us to go ahead and get ourselves a wireless terminal and get that process set up. So that way we can access our items from pretty much anywhere in our base. You can't craft from it, unfortunately. Um, but like I said, like maybe later on in the next few updates or something like that, there might be that added. Once it is added, I'll show how to do it. Um, unless I'm done with the playthrough, even though this might be an extended playthrough because I'm absolutely loving this pack. Um, and there's several ways to play it. But anyways, let's go ahead and take this out now. Um, this is the wireless terminal. It's pretty simple to make. You need a dense cell. Um, I ended up getting another one. And you also need a ME wireless access point. Very, uh, Also very simple to make as well. And you need a security terminal. Now this is a little bit more complicated because it requires a 16K ME storage component. I wanted to go ahead and show this real quick because we do need to kind of place this in the world. So you're going to need a security terminal to be able to use this. So go ahead and get your security terminal placed. 
The security terminal is a pretty interesting thing that allows you to lock out your applied energistic system and give other people access to it in very detailed ways. Like, for example, you could give somebody access to only input items into your system, but not take any items out or break any of the blocks. But you can also give somebody access to break all of the blocks and place blocks into your, and add them to your system, but not pull items out or put items in. The security manager is a very specific tool for managing the security, as it is, um, of your system. Also, it allows you access to the wireless part. So what I'm gonna do is place a wireless access point on the top of this cable. You can place this, I think, on the side of cables as well, but I'm gonna place it here, just so we can see it and visualize. And what you put in here is some range upgrades. Right now, this thing is set to 16, so we can go 16 blocks away and then bam, this thing will not let us work anymore. We cannot use this ter the terminal. To link our terminal, we need to put it inside here. And that says linked now. Whenever you drop it in there, it's done. It's linked, it's good to go. Um, another thing we're gonna need is a charger. Uh, I think we had one. Wireless charger. Yes, we have a wireless charger. So I'm gonna take the wireless charger. We're gonna get this thing set up. I think I might place uh, the wireless charger like on one here, one here maybe. We'll have two of them. Maybe it'll go twice the speed. And that will get this thing charged up for you. Um, you can also drop it in a mechanism thing. It tells you um, in the tooltip on some of these that it can be charged in the mechanism energy cell or cube. I don't know if there's maybe specific things that it can be charged in, but I'm guessing these have an issue where they can't be charged a certain way. But this thing will work when we're in range. Right now, we're out of range. Right now, we're in range. And this is what this looks like. So you can make it smaller or larger, um, and you can do all the other stuff, do auto crafting, pull things out, and stuff like that, view and sort. But like I said, it's just a way to see all of your items. So it's not the greatest for auto crafting things and pulling things out like that. Um, eventually we'll have that. But you know, you, you, you kind of gain some, but you also lose, lose some from your simple uh, storage network at the same time. Simple storage network is super simple and lacks a lot of really cool functionality that Applied Energistics provides. So I would prefer to go to this for the simple, auto, for just for the auto crafting needs. Um, even though it can do auto crafting, I think this is one's gonna be way better. So now that's done, let's make some range cards. Or Applied Energistics, I actually need to go up here. We have it to auto keep. If you type down here, it won't work. This, you have to type up here. And then I think, it's synchronized, right? J-E-I, synchronized auto keep. So when I type here, maybe that doesn't work. Auto shirt search? No. I thought it was synchronized, J-E-I auto keep. Anyways, so uh, if we go up here back to applied energistics and wireless, we can now, um, make some of these cards to upgrade this range. And I'll do 16 for right now, or 18, uh, well 16. The more you put in there, the more power it's going to cost. See right here, it's gonna cost 80 RF a tick now because we have 16 in there, but our range is now 80 meters, which is farther than the 64 that the wireless on our simple storage network can do. So I can now go pretty far out before this thing stops working which is great because we need more storage. So now this is a great tool that allows me to just dump my items in here whenever my inventory gets a little full. So yeah, well, if you guys enjoyed today's episode and you learned something new, which I'm sure, I'm sure several of you learned something new, whether it was the portal gun or whatever it may be with Applied Energistics, I know you guys learned something. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video guys a huge thumbs up. That really helps out a lot. I do appreciate you guys watching this video. If you guys stick around for the next episode, we're going to learn even more cool stuff. So I hope to see you guys there. Anyways, guys, I do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.